So having a, uh, a koala in a hospital like this, a specialist hospital, uh, is pretty unusual. What's wrong with this one, Jane? So this guy was found on um, at the base of a tree in an area just outside of Sydney where there is actually quite a lot of koalas. Um, and a member of the public found him and he was unable to climb the tree. So they took him to another veterinary practice um, where they, they just kept him overnight, um, didn't really know what to do with him. And uh, a, a wildlife carer picked him up from there. Um, the wildlife carer knew that there was something terribly wrong with his skin. So you can see he's got um, really cracked and um, crusting skin lesions there on his hands. Um, and over the course of the next 8 to 12 hours, he sort of did, became more debilitated and, and collapsed and, um, and was not really responsive to them. So they brought him here um, because they, they knew that we did um, some wildlife work and some exotics work. Um, and so here we are. So yesterday he presented unable to, to sit up at all. He uh, was not responsive. He um, was barely breathing and he was quite cold, very, very dehydrated. So, um, and it's the same as in a dog and a cat when we look at hydration, um, lift up the skin. And so you can see that he's still dehydrated and we're trying to combat that at the moment. We found that he had a very low blood glucose. So we, we yesterday we gave him um, some IV glucose and we've kept him on glucose in his drip. So you can see he's got his fluids in and that's actually in his other arm, so he can't see that right now. And his skin lesions are actually caused by sarcoptic mange. It's a little tiny mite that burrows into the skin um, and causes these crusts and, and the cracking of the skin. So he wouldn't have been able to climb the tree um, very well because he was quite painful. So um, this is treatment for um, the sarcoptic mange. This is ivermectin, and he'll need three treatments of this over the next three weeks. We're just going to put it under the skin. That's that one. And then we also have some pain relief because these hands are extremely painful and uh, we don't want... We want him to be as comfortable as possible. And in terms of food, I mean, I see he's got a little bit of uh, some gum leaves there, but <clears throat> that doesn't look like it'd be any more than a snack. No, that's right. Normally, um, if he was feeling okay, he would have gone through that in about 10 minutes. Um, and normally in a, in a koala that is being rehabilitated, let's say for being hit by a car or, or, um, or some other reason, not illness, um, we would fill this cage with leaves so that he had the choice. Koalas are very picky animals, and so they go through different leaves each day. Um, and in the wild, they would move trees um, throughout the day. And sometimes they might want tallow wood. Sometimes they'll have red gum. So it's always different, and that um, poses a challenge when they're in hospital. So because he's not eating um, any leaves, we're, we're just force-feeding him a, a ground-up mixture of leaves and and a little bit of soy milk to increase the protein. You can see he's chewing that. The amazing thing about these animals is that this is a wild animal and um, he, he could do some real damage to me with these claws um, and they have a pretty nasty bite on them. Um, but they tend to kind of settle into the whole hospital situation pretty well. And assuming you're able to, to fix this little guy up, where, where to from here? Where will he go? Are you release him back into the wild? That's right. So what, what we'll do is we'll um, hopefully he'll start to, to be feeling a lot better and, and he is becoming more um, responsive today. He doesn't, doesn't look it now. No, he doesn't. But koalas do sleep a lot. But this is a really abnormal posture for a koala. He's obviously feeling really unwell. Normally they would sit up and they would hold on to something. And you can see we've got a rolled up towel here um, and he's hugging that and and as he's feeling more um, more strong, he will kind of sit up and we'll prop him up a lot more. Um, but yeah, so he, hopefully we can get him through this problem, these problems with his hands and um, and the electrolyte abnormalities from being so dehydrated. And then he'll go off back off to the wildlife carer that brought him in, and he'll spend some time in an aviary um, just being fed up because you can see that he is awfully thin. You can see his hip bone here. Um, and then he'll be re-released in the same area as quickly as possible. So, Great. Well, we look forward to uh, 
seeing a, a full recovery and uh, we'll try and follow his progress through uh, the wildlife care as well. Yeah, great. Thank you.